ओके गाइस सो वेलकम टू द टेंथ रोबोटिक्स एंड आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस मीटअप एंड नाउ नाउ डेज वी आर डूइंग इट एट 7 पीएम एम इंस्टेड ऑफ 8 पीएम बिकॉज इन इंडिया इट गेट्स रियली लेट व्हेन वी डू इट एट 8 पीएम एंड द टॉपिक फॉर टुडेज मीटअप इज कार्ड पोल बैलेंसिंग यूजिंग री एनफोर्समेंट लर्निंग स्पेसिफिकली टेम्परल डिफरेंस वन ऑफ द टेक्निक्स ऑफ री एनफोर्समेंट लर्निंग विल बी डिस्कस टूडे एंड द एजेंडा फॉर टूडे इज such that after my introductory presentation which should not be longer than 5 minutes i'll begin with uh, the presentation of the project and i'll take a full case study and explain all the underlying concepts uh, and also go through the code base briefly and after that uh, we'll have a q&a discussion uh, we can uh, have a discussion about the topic uh, and the project that was shared and also you can uh, uh, ask doubts or stuff that you have uh, and after that uh, we'll have a quick feedback session so uh, there are two phases of uh, this feedback one would be feedback for the presentation and one would be feedback for project process uh, this would be important uh, because uh, since we are doing it every week we only want to do it better every single week so that we we develop an efficient system of uh, utilizing these one and a half hours more efficiently and after that we'll have a project accountability share so if anyone has uh, uh, done a project and wants to share his progress this is the time to do that and after that we'll have normal introductions and casual networking like we do uh, normally and after that i'll make a quick announcement as well before we wind off the meeting for today all right so i don't think i need to go into uh, details of these slides i'll just quickly mention that we are focusing on robotics artificial intelligence and also uh, experimenting with uh, new ways of learning and so edtech and entrepreneurship comes into picture and the way we learn is that we conduct uh, weekly meetups and also monthly research paper discussions out of uh, of which one has already been done and uh, we also offer project accountability and uh, the weekly meetup format that we have is uh, such that we uh, such that what i'll uh, do today is i'll uh, just quickly go through what the goal for uh, goal or the objective for today's uh, session would be and then i'll define the problem and then we can have a good discussion a good brainstorming session where we can all ideate uh now on that problem and after that only i'll be uh, sharing my own solution or uh, uh for this uh, particular uh, project or case study and uh, i'll also be sharing uh, the algorithm today it's uh, uh, not very advanced i'm just starting with beginning and if uh, reinforcement learning is something that a lot of people are interested and then we can continue with this series with uh, you know uh, slowly building up on slightly harder projects and stuff uh yeah and then uh, another thing that i have included this time is that we can probably have a task for next week so i'll share the code base and uh, maybe some of you have time and you can uh, try to run the code and uh, write it from scratch it's a very uh, small python script and you can uh, you know share your progress next time but this is totally option and after that i'll share the concepts covered and uh, like we did in the computer vision uh, meet up uh, except that we'll have a very small portion today and only pertaining to the concepts that are relevant to this particular project uh, yeah i'll uh, uh, we'll also have a concept discussion section after that and uh, the, the reason for that is that we want to learn uh, only the concepts that are presented in the project so we know how these concepts are actually used and these are just uh, the templates for those who would want to uh, uh, volunteer for a project and uh, talking about volunteering so i request uh, those of you who have some interesting ideas or projects to share to uh, please uh, volunteer for our meetups and uh, research paper reading sessions because uh, the more people volunteer the more different kinds of ideas uh, we have uh, and it's always better uh, to learn from uh, you know different perspectives rather than a few people sharing uh, the presentation every time 
so yeah let me know if you want to volunteer and i can uh, uh, fix your spot for next week all right so let's start yes so uh, as i mentioned the problem for today is card pool balancing using reinforcement learning and uh, the, this is how we would be uh, flowing with the steps so the goal of uh, today's uh, project share is that we learn a few fundamental concepts of reinforcement learning so uh, i'll be defining the reinforcement learning problem what are states actions rewards uh, expected rewards policies and also uh, briefly about value function and uh, discretization of continuous spaces and how temporal difference works so this is like very beginner friendly and uh, so if you have no experience with reinforcement learning i think this should uh, be a good starting point hopefully yes so coming to the main problem now yeah so this is uh, as i mentioned the card pole problem uh, so uh, see looking at the image here on the right we can see that we have a cart here and on it we, uh, connected using a revolute joint we have a pole so the problem that we want to solve is that uh, we want to move the cart such that the pole is uh, in a vertical position so you we want to balance this pole on this cart this is the cart pole problem so what is given is that uh, the cart moves linearly uh, so x is the variable which uh, determines its movement and uh, uh, the pole rotates and it is uh, the angle with the vertical axis of the pole is given by theta and the task is to balance the pole by moving the cart so the movement of the cart is under our control and uh, by balancing the pole we mean that we want to keep this angle within a certain limit so if the angle exceeds uh, i've taken uh, like randomly 12 degrees here so uh, if the angle exceeds 12 degrees then uh, 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 then that's out of balance so we want to keep it within 12 degrees that's the problem that we have and the control parameter is the cart movement okay so uh, the requirement is such that uh, the episode would end when we have the angle greater than 12 degree and uh, the movement of the cart uh, greater than equal to 2.4 uh, degree. Now this is, uh, uh, these uh, values I've uh, basically taken from a course that I uh, took. I can also like uh, provide reference to that at the end. Uh, and uh, the main idea is that the episode should end when the pole is out of balance. Uh, so when it is uh, not balanced then the episode should end and it should uh, reinitialize and uh, start the training process again and uh, and uh, likewise for uh, when the cart movement is out of range now uh, uh, what do i mean by out of range and uh, what do, what does episode mean so uh, these things uh, are uh, like very basic stuff and I'll be going to uh, the fundamentals of reinforcement learning and defining the problem so that this whole requirement set actually makes some sense right till now uh, does anyone have any question Uh, uh mathematical equations for that for what uh, yeah exactly yep exactly yeah that's that's the idea yeah. all right okay so going to the fundamental concept of reinforcement learning so if you're already familiar with reinforcement learning the idea is actually very simple so we have an agent which is generally either uh, an algorithm a robot uh, or anything that is taking some sort of action on the environment and the environment is uh, something that is external to the ag agent uh, and the agents uh, uh, essentially represent the brain of uh, the system the decision making part 
the and it uh, does some action on the environment and changes the state of the environment and uh, as a result we get some reward so let's briefly look at all of these uh, states i have also mentioned policy here so what does that mean so uh, the agent is basically the decision maker uh, in most cases uh, an algorithm that we would be defining or or simply a function even uh, and uh, the environment or the world is something and that is external to the agent state is a complete description of uh, this particular environment or the world and there is another term that i would want to like briefly touch is uh, called something called observation so observation uh, is uh, something that can be partial as well so when we have like uh, partial data of the environment it can be considered as an observation but a state is always something that completely describes the world uh, and action is uh, of course the action the uh, step uh, that the agent takes the reward is essentially something that tells us how good the state is and uh, the idea is that the agent should take an action on the environment change the state get some reward and uh, the overall problem of reinforcement learning is that the agent wants to maximize its reward right and uh, uh, the reward is something that is designed to solve a particular goal so for example for our problem we would have a, a particular goal and we would uh, go to that as well and the reward is always uh, uh, designed such that we want to achieve a goal and uh, the policy is uh, nothing but mapping of states to action so given states what would be the probability of selecting an action so like uh, uh, there are two types of policies actually one is uh, deterministic policy which is uh, maybe for example zero or one or if it is uh, a probabilistic uh, or a stochastic policy it can range from zero to one uh, it could have uh, 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 any values in between as well so Uh, policy is essentially the probability of selecting an action given state and uh, we mentioned episode uh, so an episode is uh, i think now it should make more sense because episode is a sequence of these states actions and rewards and every episode must end with a terminal state and a terminal state is also defined according to the required goal so that's the uh, overall reinforcement learning problem now back to our problem and how it fits to the reinforcement learning case so uh, we see that episode ends uh, when uh, uh, basically the episode would end when the uh, uh, when the agent balances the pole for at least 200 steps now this is again a, a number you can also uh, take maybe uh, 100 or 150 and you can experiment with different things and uh, try out for this particular problem i'm taking 200 steps if so if the uh, if the agent learns to balance the pole for 200 steps then we should be uh, uh, fine with the problem and the problem is solved and the episode should we should end the episode uh, so uh, yeah we, uh, we should end the episode in three conditions one is when uh, the steps is greater than 200 and it's balanced then the problem is essentially solved and we should be uh, uh, ending the episode but there are two other cases which are not ideal and when uh, the theta uh, the uh, angle is actually uh, uh, not good enough to keep the pole straight so we would end the episode and we would try again same for uh, the movement x basically all right now let's uh, have some discussion so uh, based on these uh, this very simple idea of reinforcement learning i hope that made some sense now what we will be doing is we'll be having a quick discussion and trying to define state action reward and policy so here i would uh, encourage your participation and uh, maybe you can make your guesses of how we can probably represent the state of the system 
and uh, uh, and how we will uh, we can define the action what kind of reward we can take and policy any any guesses any vague guesses or uh, anything would be fine there is no wrong answer Okay, so you want to define the state as uh, x and theta. So you want to take these two variables into account. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good uh, uh, definition of a state, and that's definitely valid. Uh, and any other guesses? that's like a, a different way of defining it so you want to uh, uh, sorry can you repeat you want to define one of these parts as uh, the uh, environment and the other one So you want to define uh, the state as theta and uh, uh, the action uh, uh, movement. So uh, this particular variable and movement uh, you would be using as uh, action. so uh, so this is not like this is not defined at this stage this is what we are trying to do so uh, you want to define basically x as the input and uh, theta as the output like uh, so one valid solution that we had till now was that uh, we can have uh, both x and theta as the state right yeah a and another uh, thing that uh, uh, someone uh, mentioned now is that uh, we can uh, have uh, x as the representation of the action and theta as uh, uh, just for the state um, but actually like what is the action so uh, in in this particular case i want to try to understand uh, how you're defining it so what would the action be okay yeah yeah okay yeah the linear movement yeah that's definitely right yeah and uh, and i mean uh, this is uh, perhaps also uh, valid that we can represent the state as just theta right uh, i don't know if the results would be good or not probably this is something that can uh, we can like uh, try out experimentally uh, on uh, a program uh, but uh, but it uh, does 
seem uh, valid i think if i'm not wrong and yeah any other yeah exactly hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's. Uh, yeah. Let's keep this uh, as well in mind. Any other uh, solutions? Anyone wants to share? Uh, any crazy ideas are also welcome. So, like one idea that uh, can be is that you can use uh, images to capture and and somehow uh, you know use pixels. Uh, Uh, the the state of the uh, uh, you know the pixel uh, uh, arrangement as a state as well like uh, something along that line uh, can also be valid so maybe you can think in that direction or uh, or any other ideas that you have yeah i am you what uh, exactly which parameter do you want to uh, measure using i am you yeah so yeah yeah exactly hmm. <laughs> uh yeah i mean uh, so uh, for this particular problem let's not go into the uh, sensors because then i mean yeah that could be a different uh, we would be taking a different direction let's just consider it a uh, uh, simple mechanical system and let's not go into how we are measuring theta and x and j- we just have theta and x let's let's take this into account yep exactly yeah uh, so we want to keep this as straight as, as possible and the angle within uh, 12 degrees that's it yeah yeah so any other uh, solutions you can think of and what would be the reward and the policy we we haven't talked about this what should be what should the reward be uh, so our goal is to keep it uh, almost straight for around 200 episodes so how can we easily define the reward okay uh, so the reward part is not clear huh? uh, yeah uh, so uh, the reward is uh, maybe i can go to that slide again yeah uh, yeah i think in this slide i haven't explained it in detail uh, but I, as we go through the problem it will become more clear definitely so uh, the reward here as i mentioned is it tells us how good the state is uh now what does this mean uh, when is a state good according to you uh so a state would be good or an action taken would be good when it is towards a goal uh, towards the goal uh, uh, when it brings us closer towards the goal so in reinforcement learning everything we do is to achieve this particular goal so this reward should be designed such that uh, we get a good uh, reward let's de- let's define a variable reward right and uh, we increment uh, 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 this value or we you know uh, increase this whenever we realize that the state is uh, something that is bringing us towards the goal that is like an abstract idea and how it will be implemented in uh, the code i think uh, as we go through the uh, process it will make more sense but uh, does it uh, make like uh, theoretically does it make sense uh, what a reward is supposed to do yeah
uh, yeah exactly so the uh, actually not uh, after and uh, that depends on how you define it but uh, ideally after every step but i have a slide that explains uh, reward as well after that so uh, don't worry about it i think it will be clear uh, um, yeah uh, and uh, we can still try to define uh, uh, what a reward would could be so so th think of uh, think of like uh, what our goal is and try to derive that uh, for this particular state what could the reward be such that it brings us closer to our state so uh, but for that you have to keep like i think st one state and one action into account so uh, let's let's fix for example x uh, and theta as a state for this particular case and uh, for action also the movement of uh, x so uh, let's just take this as uh, one of the uh, persons uh, uh, proposed let's just take this and try to now uh, define the reward somehow so both of so both of these things are uh, you have also defined as the state uh, but uh, so i think the concept of uh, reward is uh, yeah, I, I think i need to probably cover it in a little more detail so it makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, yeah, exactly what we define. So you can keep it uh, as simple as you know, uh, doing plus one or minus one when it is. Uh, when the state is good basically that 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 is totally a valid uh, uh, solution yeah so you you would be defining it basically <laughs> so again uh, you can define it so again you can define it you can actually define it that okay if the angle is greater than uh, 12 let's uh, give a negative reward or maybe you can just give a positive reward whenever the angle is uh, within the range so it's up to you totally to uh, define it and uh, how it will perform is pro <clears throat> probably something that uh, only after running you can uh, uh, see the results yeah Uh, so you can actually define the state as uh, simply x as well although that wouldn't uh, probably make sense but you can define uh, the state as x theta you can define it as uh, x and uh, the velocity of cart and pole angle and you can define it in uh, multiple ways maybe even take the second order terms acceleration into account as well if you uh, yeah that, that's totally possible uh, 
so the point of this discussion is to just uh, uh, you know have a, a brainstorming session and try to understand uh, 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 try to get different solutions uh, otherwise if i just share my uh, solution then it would just uh, bias and we would not be thinking so yeah uh, you can define state in multiple ways actually Uh, well, I think uh, uh, so. You mean computational performance or uh, the, from a result? Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. I think that depends on the goal uh, like uh, maybe the goal is to uh, to for example uh, have very small o oscillations and also the movement the minor movement of the pole that we have it should be very smooth probably in that case we can uh, define velocity and acceleration terms uh, yeah i'm not sure i think this uh, uh, it depends on the problem and for our problem we don't care about how smooth the pole moves we only care that uh, it's it's straight enough and theta is probably uh, within a limit so uh, so i think it uh, depends on the goal and uh, probably from results point of view i don't know because i haven't tested maybe some of you have tested uh, could throw some light on that yeah so uh, yeah i think this is very easy to test just you can uh, change the variables and we, uh, we can uh, we can discuss this after this as well uh, when i'm sharing the code maybe we can uh, try that out uh, if time permits okay uh, now let's talk about policy so the policy to reiterate would be a mapping between state and action or uh, a probability of selecting an action given a state so uh, for that again uh, the state and action should be fixed uh, so that we can define a policy uh, so yeah let's take the state again as x and theta here so uh, to uh, make it uh, uh, simple uh, the policy should be such that it should uh, uh, i mean uh, again uh, uh, try to uh, if if the angle is greater then it should uh, try to minimize the angle and if the angle is uh, less then it should probably keep it at that angle uh, so uh, all of these things are towards uh, one particular goal and i think uh, we can individually define it easily if we understand if we always take into account the overall goal so any ideas regarding policy mm <laughs> hmm yeah that's good Hmm. Yeah, that's that's totally good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's totally valid. Yeah. Any other policy that you think of, and and don't worry if you like. Uh, uh, if you are not sure, just make wild guesses. I mean, we are all learning here. Nobody is judging you. Okay. Uh, 
so it's kind of similar but are you talking about like the rate of change of uh, theta okay so so i think it's it's the same thing right uh, if theta is mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah okay all right so now let's uh, go to the solution that i have uh, prepared and i'm uh, to be honest i'm not an expert at reinforcement learning either so if you have any new suggestions or think that this might not be the best uh, and we can probably define states in a new way feel free to suggest and uh, we can all learn from it so yeah so the way uh, that i've defined the state is x x dot also the velocity theta and uh, theta dot the rate of change of the angle x is the cart position x dot cart velocity pole position and the pole tip velocity uh, and uh, another small concept that i want to introduce now is that of state space so state space is nothing but the range of allowable values for each state variable so for example we know that x is defined from minus 2.4 to plus 2.4 so this is x minus 2.4 to 2.4 sorry and uh, x dot the velocity of the cart and the pole tip velocity can be anything from minus infinity to infinity and the pole position is uh, minus 41.8 it's in degrees and to uh, 40 uh, uh, 41.8 uh, degrees Th uh, this is the range of the pole uh, position sorry uh, yeah so this is uh, state space do you uh, 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 can some of you realize uh, why defining the state in such a way could be problematic to in implement the reinforcement learning problem uh, uh, just to point out again in reinforcement learning we go uh, step by step and reiterate uh, define state action and uh, reward at every time step and so do you think like defining the states or uh, there is something that could cause some trouble here sorry yeah yeah uh, so that would uh, that would uh, head in the direction of selecting a, a value function uh, but i'll cover that uh, in the coming slides what if we don't uh, uh, get a desired result in the end uh, so uh, the thing is that uh, we have to define the rewards uh, such that it should yeah we have to define the rewards accordingly and uh, so we we basically play with these particular parameters uh, again and again like action states and rewards and maybe we change how we define it and uh, in the hope that we will get good results and uh, i don't know maybe there's a science behind it but what i understand how i have used it is that i always experiment with these variables and try to see like uh, 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 which particular combination gives us uh, the best result so uh, in defining it uh, yes we do uh, trial and error so for example maybe you you don't need to define uh, x dot and theta dot right maybe you need to 
ah okay uh, okay sorry uh, yeah so uh, these allowable values are yeah i think these are just predefined based on this particular uh, scenario so it wouldn't make sense that the cart moves more than uh, yeah a particular range right so this is based on that and and same maybe there's a limit to the uh, angle that the pole moves yeah, yeah. sorry i understood uh, uh, in a different direction okay all right yeah and the action is uh, i think this is like uh, a very simple problem that i've taken and uh, most of you already guessed the solution to this and uh, so except that the action is actually defined uh, in like uh, uh, as just moving one step left or moving one step right so uh, yeah i think uh, that's how the, you guys also defined it and the reward is again i've taken like the simplest thing possible uh, that uh, so uh, we know that the episode uh, would fail uh, 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 episode would be over and would be successful when we have greater than 200 uh, steps in which the pole is straight right and so imagine that uh, it is straight for 200 episodes and for each particular time step we give a reward of plus one so at the end of it we would get a reward of 200 and uh, this would be a good indicator that uh, we have successfully finished the task right and again you can also definitely define uh, it as uh, uh, maybe you define plus two for uh, uh, when it is within the angle and minus one for when it is outside the angle so yeah there is multiple ways you can uh, define this so how i've defined very simply is reward of uh, plus one every step it keeps uh, theta less than or equal to 12 degrees yes uh, and uh, and the goal would be reached when running average uh, value of rewards is greater than 195 this is uh, uh, the uh, minimum that we can uh, uh, have to define it as successful. like in a few uh, uh, steps in between you mean so uh, so no actually uh, because the way that we have uh, defined is it's that the episode would end whenever it's greater than 12 degrees so in the, for example maybe on the second step in the angle is greater than 12 degrees and uh, uh, then the episode would end in, in just uh, two steps and so we would have a reward of uh, very less so uh, of course i mean that's uh, re with reinforcement learning the reward is always uh, sparse yeah so uh, like after uh, i don't know i won't, don't want to put a number to it but after a lot of states uh, a lot of like uh, failed experiments maybe we would have a few uh, ones that would reach us and uh, those uh, and that would be the uh, result for us basically Uh, yeah so talking about policy now if the yeah policy is also like uh, very simple in this case and if the pole is uh, left of the center then we move the cart left and if the pole is uh, right to the center then we move it right uh, just like simple balancing and now let's uh, cover the algorithm and before uh, covering the algorithm I want to cover a few basic concepts here uh, so I asked you all like what problem we could have with the state spaces 
like one problem which is not very obvious and when we view it uh, uh, for the first time is that uh, the state spaces are continuous right so it uh, it can move from minus 2.4 to 2.4 and there are infinite values in between right and that's a huge problem because uh, uh, at uh, every time step how are we going to define these uh, infinite values so the state variables are changing continuously over time and this is a, a problem for which we have several advanced reinforcement learning algorithms as well. So in today's case study I am taking the extremely simple solution that is possible and was used before we had uh, actor critic and other approaches so we take this uh, state variable let's say x for example and it ranges from minus 2.4 to 2.4 of course it's it's finite uh, that is it is bounded within a range but it is continuous and the idea is that we divide it into 10 equal buckets of uh, size 0.48 such that uh, if a value of x lies between uh, the, let's say minus 2.4 and minus 1.92 then it is allocated to bucket 1 so now you can see that the input is uh, not infinite uh, uh, the input space uh, the state space is not infinite but uh, it's discrete uh, in the sense that we have only 10 uh, uh, 10 buckets to represent it so uh, does it make sense uh, uh, does it give an idea of how this could be uh, uh, easier for us uh, yeah but it would also not be possible to implement uh, a continuous uh, state space right I mean we have to define a time step so, it, uh, so since there are an infinite range of values possible, uh, it's it's not really possible to uh, define it. So we have to find a way to discretize it or use other methods, which uh, which would be more advanced for today's tutorial. But that would also uh, actually uh, have, uh, we would have, uh, uh, like compare the number of uh, states we would have. Uh, for example, like uh, the, the values would be way, way more than if we just had 10 buckets. Yeah, uh, so uh, this is basically to uh, simplify our problem and uh, so that it can be, it can take less uh, computation and can be easily implemented as well. Yeah, uh, so let's move on to the next concept which is uh, state value function. Uh, so so we need a way to uh, judge how good a state is given a particular policy right so uh, let's say this is a, a state that we have and uh, based on a particular policy which is nothing but uh, probability of selecting an action uh, uh, we get an action from this state and uh, so what we want to know is how good this particular state is and uh, for this I just want to cover another small concept called expected return and uh, okay I think I've like, kind of not used the right links here uh, yep uh, so the expected return is uh, again uh, let's let's uh, have a look at the goal of the agent the goal of the agent is to maximize its 
uh, overall reward right that's uh, the whole reinforcement learning problem and uh, the way we are defining uh, rewards is that we are adding rewards overall uh, time steps so t plus 1 would be for example the reward for the next time step and uh, that rt plus 2 would be for uh, another time step later so these are all the future rewards and these are added and this uh, uh, added value is what is called return and so what we are doing is that uh, we want to maximize this particular return uh, and uh, t here is the terminal state and uh, we know that at the terminal state the episode ends uh, and another uh, thing is that uh, we want to give more value to the rewards that we have uh, in the next state uh, compared to the rewards that we have in the far future right because the future is very uncertain so uh, we know for sure that in the next time step for example uh, 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 we can have a good reward uh, but uh, in the future for example we don't know which state we would be in and what set of values we have taken so we we can't rely on the future rewards that much so we want to have a discount factor so uh, uh, in this equation we just multiply with uh, gamma uh, for uh, every next step basically so the, the more further away we uh, are uh, uh, considering the results the less reliable they are and so we want to reduce the reward value right so this is how we define it rt plus 1 plus gamma into rt plus 2 so gamma would be less than 1 and that's why it would be uh, reduced this particular reward and as you can see gamma square rt plus 3 this will be uh, again uh, reduced and, and so on uh, and for the final state the reward uh, would be zero so that's how we define the expected reward and why this is important to us is because uh, we want to know the value of a state so uh, let me explain how all of this is linked so uh, so the uh, so this uh, state value function gives the value of a state under a policy pi we know what a policy is and this value is uh, uh, an indicator of how good a state is for the agent so what does good for uh, uh, for an agent mean the most important thing for an agent is to accomplish its goal and for that it has to maximize its expected reward return right so return return is just these uh, added rewards added discounted rewards right so now this equation should make sense the value of a state under a policy pi so this policy is defined uh, generally by this uh, symbol pi and uh, this it's the expectation of the return given this particular state so for this particular state what is the expectation of uh, this return so again as we define this return this is nothing but rt plus 1 plus gamma rt plus 2 plus uh, till rt uh, the, for the terminal state so we want to maximize the expectation of this right so this is another concept that we would need to understand the algorithm yes and uh, now let's look at the algorithm and uh, don't worry if some of these things are not clear everything would come together once we visit the code so in the algorithm uh, it's such that we will initialize the policy in the beginning and we will initialize the value function these are just uh, initial uh, uh, values that we provide and for a certain number of episodes which we define we initialize the environment so uh, the, the uh, state uh, action and, and just giving an initial value to this so for example maybe we give uh, I don't know 0 0.5 2x and, and some particular value maybe 0 0.5 or uh, 0 to this uh, pole or something 
so we define the environment uh, and then uh, for each state in one particular episode now is where uh, we are updating things so we take this action according to a given policy right uh, so uh, the uh, the policy is such that uh, as it moves right the cart should also moves right uh, that's uh, uh, and based on that we would uh, define action and action as we mentioned is just like zero and one is how we define it so we would take the action after defining it and we would get the reward and state because the state would change right after we take an action it would move and so uh, uh, x theta everything would change we, we get it and then we set the current state to this new state we just update it and then we discretize also separately the pole angles and if uh, this angle uh, theta is uh, less than zero then we uh, move left else move right uh, this is again uh, defining the policy separately which will be uh, uh, called in that function and we define a number of goals and we print the value function uh, for all of these uh, 10 states so alpha is a learning factor I think I missed one of the concept slides sorry this is not Monte Carlo prediction this is temporal difference I just wanted to show this particular formula here so I mentioned that we want to uh, have a value of a state so this is uh, using temporal difference we uh, calculate return after each time step so th th this is after every single time step we calculate the value so we have an initial value right we initialize the value function plus we add a learning rate to it and then this is the expected return for this particular state minus this uh, minus the, the uh, value function so this is our formula for defining the value function and here uh, we have just expanded gt is equal to rd plus 1 plus uh, gamma vst plus 1 so I'm, I'm not going to cover uh, the derivations i think today after i discuss the code uh, we also have a brief uh, theoretical uh, concept discussion so we can like uh, probably uh, I discuss this in more detail but for the purpose of the code we just need to know what this formula is and how it is being used and uh, this uh, this is just the temporal difference error which is defined by the next reward plus the discount into the next value uh, and minus the current uh, value okay all right okay so now I'll go to the code and for that I have to just give me a moment Okay, uh, can someone just uh, say something? Uh, I want to quickly test because I'm switching system. Basically, it's on Ubuntu uh, where I have the code. No, I'm not able to hear. Uh, once more, sorry. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, Uh, just um, give me a moment.
so my screen should be visible now Okay, is my screen visible? Hello? Yeah, okay. All right. So you should be able to see this code. As you can see, it's, it's very simple to implement. Um, and hopefully everything would make sense and uh, we can uh, change stuff here as well all right uh, so i'm using here uh, open ai gym package and uh, using this it is very simple to implement so i've defined a, a policy a simple policy here and uh, the action is equal to zero if state is less than five uh, now does this make sense uh, action is equal to zero means that uh, moving left right an action is equal to one means moving right and so the state less than five so we saw that we have discretized the state such that uh, it is divided into 10 buckets and uh, when it is uh, from buckets one to uh, five and uh, and when it is like uh, the next five states uh, so for the first uh, uh, five it is uh, towards the left the angle is uh, less than zero and so we would move uh, the cart left right and for the next uh, uh, next five buckets if, if our uh, state is greater than five greater than equal to five then uh, then we move right does this make sense hello okay okay uh, yeah so as you can see it's it's very very straightforward to implement and uh, so we define uh, uh, we, uh, we define our environment and we have a cart pole environment already set up which has all these states actions and and st uh, the state uh, space action space already defined so we don't need to do anything uh, and alpha is uh, learning rate is we have taken 0.1 here and gamma the discount factor is 0.99 and uh, this is again uh, this is discretizing the states into 10 uh, buckets now this is the value function v and uh, uh, the, we have initially set the value function of all the states in the range of uh, total number of states all the st uh, states have value zero initially and now is our main reinforcement learning thing happening so for i in range of uh, number of games the environment is reset so this is like uh, uh, the, the resetting the environment initially and giving it uh, uh, the initial value and uh, done is a variable that we have set to false and uh, while uh, not done, done that is while uh, done is true we we uh, define this uh, state in this uh, range basically so observation 2 is basically here uh, referring to the state and uh, so everything we get is from env.reset so env.reset uh, returns the state action and reward right uh, so the observations uh, second part this is uh, giving us uh, the state value which we are discretizing or digitalizing and then we we just uh, make it go through this simple policy so state is the input and uh, depending on what the state is we get this action output 
and then we take uh, the next step and we again record the next observation the reward whether it's uh, done or not and info and again we discretize the next state and then we allocate it uh, to the next state after we have uh, we have uh, uh, defined the value function so here the values functions are again the same equation that we have had right and uh, and, and at the end we just print the value so let's quickly run it it's a very straightforward code and uh, yes so we now have it so what we printed was that uh, we printed the state and its value so we are trying to make sense of the value function now right so for a particular state that is zero a state that is zero means it is towards the left extreme of its limit right and so its value should not be good because our goal is to keep it as centered as possible right and so if it is like collapsing it it's about to fail so we should not have a very good value so we have poor value here and at the same time let's look at the 10th state this also has less value right and the reason for this is again the same it is uh, it is kind of uh, it is collapsing towards the right side it is about to fall and it, this is not the uh, ideal state towards our particular goal and as we can expect the middle middle states 5 and 6 have the most uh, values right and uh, so th this thing should uh, make sense now how it is so yeah does anyone have any doubt with this particular code now this is a prediction problem and in the next uh, 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 probably one of the few meetups I can also explain it using Q learning how it is done uh, but let's let's stick to it uh, for now so does it make sense or, or if anything is unclear just let me know Okay, so uh, does that mean that we have no doubts and it's clear or it's not clear at all? Uh, okay, so it's actually probably not clear. Maybe let me go through it again because Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. The best way is to actually run it and see it. Uh, maybe let me also try to env dot render. Let me see if it actually shows the state. Yeah. I should have shown this so here it is trying to keep it within it uh, within a particular range and I'm not I don't remember how many steps I defined there but it will continue for the number of steps that I defined and at the end we would have uh, the result which is uh, not the best but decent enough as this is a, a toy problem that we are uh, handling right now so yeah it's just going to keep trying okay. yeah so so uh, to just quickly summarize the whole idea is that uh, that we have this agent and uh, it is taking 
a particular action and uh, changing the state of the environment so the state of the environment is represented by the movement of the cart and the angle of the pole our goal is to keep the pole uh, in uh, a particular range that is straight and uh, let's go into uh, this first the main part and then i can see how uh, tell how it, it links I, I know it's a bit uh, tricky to grasp in beginning but uh, uh, you will get used to it so yeah so the state discretization divide making the continuous state discrete this is what this step is doing defining the action how are we defining the action we have defined a policy such that when it goes left we move the cart left when it goes right we move the cart right so that's very simply the action and then again uh, we take a step we take an action uh, either move uh, left or right and then uh, the state changes observation reward done info and uh, the, yeah, this is again the digitization of the state and uh, this is the main thing the uh, value function and that uh, we are updating so we know if the state is good or not so that's the whole idea i, I can share this small script with you so you can try it on your own and just uh, let me know if you have uh, doubts or anything yeah so if we have no doubts uh, we can move quickly to the next part which is uh, understanding the theoretical concepts and uh, depending on the time and interest uh, we can cover few topics or several ones okay so i'll just quickly again leave and join my screen is visible again okay yes uh, so i'm audible right Okay, okay. Sorry, I am switching systems, so I need to confirm every time. Yeah. Oh, okay. is it better now or is it the same hello okay actually uh, 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 yeah i'm i'm on my headphones uh i couldn't connect the microphone today otherwise it would be louder but it's still understandable right okay so 
let's move on to the next part uh, before that let me ask you how many of you are familiar with reinforcement learning and how many of for how many of you uh, it's a totally new topic and depending on that we can take the topics Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, so the idea is. Uh, let me quickly share and then let me know what you think about it so the idea was that since we are starting with this of course there is a lot of stuff that uh, takes time to understand and also explain so we can take few of the topics uh, like we did for the computer vision session we can take a few of the topics each uh, few people can take multiple topics and just try to explain briefly you can know there are also some topics that we covered today uh, for example you can take the reinforcement learning problem and try to explain everything in your own words so if there is something missing everyone can also understand and temporal difference what it is model free learning and model based learning Q learning, temporal difference. Uh, okay, I've put it two times there. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, expected return. So this is a simple topic. Markov decision process is a very simple one. Uh, so actually, these are the very fundamental topics that I've taken. State value function I already covered. So just uh, I think uh, what we should do is let's take up uh, a few topics of this each at least one topic uh, everyone can take and uh, we can just probably take 15 minutes and watch uh, one or two uh, videos or take a ppt online and understand it and uh, and then explain it uh, and even if you don't want to explain it or do, or uh, are not comfortable explaining it that's fine uh, and uh, we can take lesser topics so what do you guys think the idea is to have some uh, good understanding of reinforcement learning so we can have uh, another uh, multiple reinforcement learning sessions with uh, other topics so so i mean actually right now but uh, whatever you are comfortable with basically like we did for the computer vision meetup the idea is that you don't need to know anything yeah yeah so i also want to have uh, this uh, uh, some concept discussion at the end maybe we don't need to do a lot of maybe we can just take three or four topics of this but since we are like yeah Uh, no I, I don't I think it's uh, not that difficult once you understand it maybe starting it can take some time to actually understand the whole how the whole system is working it takes some time uh, but apart from that I don't think it's too complicated or anything yeah 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 and and you don't need to for example uh, I have taken mostly theoretical ones, so model based learn, reinforcement learning, model free. We just, you, you can quickly find out what the difference is and explain state value function. I have already explained and, and Q learning. Uh, probably you, you don't need to give the whole algorithm or explain with formulas and details. Just give an overall idea or, or maybe how it is different from temporal difference anything I mean anything you can figure out in 10 to 15 minutes sure 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 yeah sure I mean there's no no compulsion no no worries yeah uh, don't feel pressurized uh, I mean the idea is that if you 
if you search for it and you have to present it then you would be forced to learn right so that's why this is also effective so how many of you are uh, do uh, want to participate and how many of you are comfortable with at least one topic just let's just take one topic each there's pure silence sorry apur mm -hmm. okay uh okay sure 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 all right yeah that makes sense so anyway you have seen the topics i think it will be easier as well next time uh, so you can uh, probably do some homework and uh, then present i think that would be easier for everyone as well right okay yeah perfect sounds good and uh, another uh, so there are two options that we have for next meet up or the subsequent ones either we can do this thing uh, the whole uh, session on theoretical discussion or we can take up another problem or we can also rediscuss it right maybe you can have a look at it and you have doubts and we can rediscuss it as well okay let's do one thing yeah uh, just you can you can uh, i'll give you the python script you all can uh, try it out on your own and then Uh, let's do a theoretical discussion on the concepts uh, so, so next week we can do like purely theoretical discussion and we can understand so for example if state and observation is not clear or an expected return let's let's have a discussion next time so it's like it's very simple it's just open ai gym and uh, numpy is all you need nothing more yeah 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 so this is like a very basic one uh, that i've taken uh, yeah all right so it's fine uh, we can discuss the concept next time and uh, yeah so this is something that i made a slide of like write this code yourself run and maybe show results you don't need to show results just for your understanding and this is optional and up to you and yeah so uh, a few references i can maybe tell you that for beginning uh, it would be great i, I mean just uh, a disclaimer i'm not an expert myself my thesis is on this so i have to uh, study and get involved in reinforcement learning so i can recommend a few uh courses so there is this channel by dr phil on youtube just search phil reinforcement learning or something and he has like really uh, uh programming uh, explanations of all the reinforcement learning algorithms but before that i would highly recommend you to check the deep lizard youtube channel and Uh, yeah i've seen mm -hmm. yeah yeah i've i've seen like I've, i think one or two of those but yeah i get which channel you are referring to and uh, yeah so uh, i think this uh, uh, steve Brunton Brunton or Burton sorry uh, Okay all right yeah and uh, I think these uh, David Silver lectures uh, Steve Brunton and uh, Deep Lizard these are for theoretical stuff Deep Lizard would be a very good starting point because it would be like 5 or 10 minute videos and really good explanation so I can recommend this thing to begin with but plus if you want to like practice uh, then open ai gym is the best way to start and uh, there is this spinning up 
dot open ai dot com this is a very good and detailed reinforcement learning resource and goes all the way from uh, beginning to advanced in understanding research papers and stuff so this is something that uh, i'm also doing to some extent currently and i highly recommend this uh, thing especially if you just don't just want theoretical uh, knowledge and also want to implement so this would be a good resource and uh, yeah uh, so uh, so at, at the i think last few pages it has uh, it has actually uh, listed all the research papers and all the algorithms uh, in a very uh, organized way and also probably given some uh, tips and advices on how you can learn more so it's like all the way from beginners to beginner to how uh, uh, big you want to be in reinforcement learning so this is pretty good and this thing is uh, this thing i really like uh, uh, by dr phil youtube because it's actually not uh, beginner friendly but after some time it's it's probably the best way to learn because it actually guides you through the code step by step and a part of uh, what i am sharing today uh, especially the code base the theoretical stuff i've referred from all over the places but uh, the programming stuff is uh, from a course that uh, from a udemy course that uh, this guy is also offering so uh, this one is also pretty good yeah and uh, yep yeah, that's it uh, for the project let's move on to the quick feedback i don't know how much of it was uh, clear but uh, i'm pretty sure you would get some idea today right uh, what are your feedbacks and also suggestions for presentation maybe you can briefly give that uh, and also i have organized this discord channel a bit so there is now a separate feedback uh, channel so on meetup feedback if you could uh, give some suggestions for improvement i think that would be really helpful because uh, yeah i'm not sure if this was understandable today <laughs> yeah machine learning with phil ah yeah okay you're right you're right mm -hmm. okay yeah thanks for pointing out yeah it's machine learning with phil yeah all right uh, so yeah any feedback uh, for uh, the session today and if you want something uh, if you want to discuss something in less detail or more detail or different topics anything okay yeah uh, and also if you want to give up your feedback later uh, i mentioned we have this feedback uh, section and meet up feedback channel so if you are comfortable to write uh, later just uh, if you could write it it would really help uh, and for the project process uh, so i want to actually keep this uh, project process as standard uh, let me show you how i have defined it so after defining the goal of the problem problem definition and brainstorming so i'm just carrying this with one of our sessions like some of you remember with deep learning i think this one was uh, uh, everyone liked this brainstorming session and today also probably uh, yeah so uh, let's keep the brainstorming session and project or case study solution after that algorithm uh, plus code and task allocation so uh, is there any suggestion on how we can make the process uh, so it's easier uh, uh, for uh, anyone to understand and uh, in get involved in this any suggestions are welcome Okay, 
Yeah, uh, because I mean, I think this uh, coding part was uh, missing in our uh, previous discussions as well. I think just uh, uh, Shujat shared one of the times and, and probably a couple of times uh, more, uh, but uh, generally we didn't have a thorough code uh, discussion. So, because I mean, ultimately you have to program this stuff. So if you don't know the programming, then that would be a problem. So that's the idea. Okay, and also regarding this uh, thing, if you have any feedback, just feel free to write. And yeah. Let's do a quick introduction session before we wind off. Okay, yeah, I feel like I already know you all, uh, but for someone who would be new, maybe just quickly you could tell your name and uh, where are you from and uh, what your interests are and stuff. Let's start with uh, Aditya again. Elena? Yeah, do you know Japanese already? Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I've done N N five. Oh, no, I didn't actually give the exam, but I've taken the yeah uh, course uh, N five. So yeah, yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah, Kanishk. Is this the first time that you're joining Kanish? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. So how did you uh, how did you uh, get to know about this server and how did you find today's session? Ah, okay. A Mickey Mouse Labs. Mm -hmm. What does it do actually? I've, I've seen uh, yeah, some people uh, from Mickey Mouse Labs on LinkedIn. I think I'm connected with some people, but uh, I don't know what uh, what is it specifically that you guys are doing. Okay. Interesting. And where uh, where is it located? Hello. Okay, I think we lost connection to him. Uh, yeah. Okay. Srinivas, welcome again. Hello, Srinivas. Okay. 
okay 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 sure sure so good to have you uh, this time and uh, before we leave i just uh, want to have a quick announcement but also before that any other uh, any other thing that you guys are like uh, struggling with and uh, would like to discuss like you could uh, just uh, probably casually let me know and if i can probably include some sections on the server that would help i can see that like on the server there are lots of people asking for ross help and uh, not not a lot of people uh, answering but uh, i think ross is something that uh, people definitely need help with okay yeah if you have any like uh, suggestions or any anything you would want to uh, any other specific event you would want to do or like for example some of the guys were doing this uh, ross uh, discussions and stuff or anything just let me know <coughs> i can see if i can organize something Yeah, Apur, you were saying something. I mean, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, whatever uh, uh, actually is uh, helpful for the people in the server would be applicable to the server, right? So, uh, so for me, it would not make a difference. I would just I can make a separate channel, and if you want to have like uh, uh, admission related stuff, like feel free. I mean, uh, what's stopping you? Yeah. So I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, so, like, do you want me to make a separate section on uh, admission-related stuff or something? Okay, okay. Okay, so mm Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, I mean, what I think all of you are pointing to is uh, something related to Uh, probably guidance regarding admissions maybe someone who is already admitted uh, some place i can guide you through writing motivation letters i don't know or something like that so i mean yeah uh, i mean we have a good community so you can definitely uh, 
रीच आउट टू पीपल आई कैन मेक अ चैनल एंड यू कैन यू कैन राइट इट आई टैग यू ऑन द चैनल लेटर सो या इफ इफ यू आई मीन वी ऑलरेडी हैव सो मेनी चैनल सो फॉर मी इट्स नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम आई कैन इंक्लूड अ फ्यू मोर ओके या थैंक्स फॉर योर सजेशन और राइट या लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द क्विक अनाउंसमेंट सो इट्स अ रियली वेरी क्विक अनाउंसमेंट सो सो द टू आस्क यू टू fill a few roles so um i don't know how to formalize this process because this is something that we need to have a proper uh system of uh like filling the roles uh, so currently this is a, a role that i defined initially and uh, aditya is now like really consistently posting uh, uh, really good news articles on news feed so this requirement is already fulfilled and it's it's also very helpful so thanks aditya for that and uh, apart from that the open roles like this is uh, volunteering to present for the meet up a project or anything this is like this is something i sometimes struggle with because uh, it's sometimes difficult to uh, find someone and it's not always easy to prepare something every week every week sharing some idea would be really difficult for me so i would really appreciate if you could uh, volunteer i think this is the uh, major requirement currently like uh, every week if some of you could uh, volunteer sharing or maybe just even uh, come up with a topic right maybe come up with uh, a an a theoretical idea and and just uh, have a discussion but uh, uh, volunteering to present it would be i think uh, helpful for the community plus also relieve some of my <laughs> pressure because it's difficult to manage uh, and apart from that like uh, i'm sure like many of you are interested in research and would uh, be reading lots of research papers some of you already also uh, mentioned that you would want to participate but if you want to participate please write on paper reading volunteer so i can fix your slot so this is just i want to uh, something that i want to add at the end and uh, the idea is and all will always be that everyone can participate regardless of age or experience so that's why i try to keep this whole presentation as beginner friendly as possible uh, and i will try to make sure that we have the same uh, format and also even uh, better formats uh, next time and so that everyone understands everything at the end of the session so yeah that's all i want to say and thanks a lot for joining uh today's session